My name is Alyssa Perez, and yes, I am the only Googler talk today. Um, over the course of the day, you've heard from many of your peers about the importance of sustainable engagement, and I'm here today to share some of my experiences from the game's point of view. So before I jump into the material, I wanted to give you um, a little bit of context on my background and what my current role is. So prior to joining Google, I worked on many different mobile game products throughout my career. I held various titles from business analytics manager to economy and monetization strategist and senior product manager. And I've now been with Google for two years on the growth consulting team in PlayVD. And what our team does is partner with developers like yourselves, utilizing our platform data in order to help you improve your business. So today, what we're going to cover are some of the ways that games are approaching engagement and monetization and seeing if there's an opportunity to bridge the gap and apply these learnings into your apps. And throughout the course of the presentation, we're going to focus on the common framework that we're all familiar with when thinking about the user lifecycle. Engage, retain, and monetize. Yeah, it might be ordered a little bit differently, but I'll explain why as we go through. So what we're going to do is cover how we view the linkages between engagement and monetization from the design perspective. And we're going to use a common game genre as an example. And then we'll go through some data together to see the correlation between engagement and the other two pieces of the user lifecycle using both games and apps data. So be ready for a lot of data sharing in this presentation and lots of explanations of charts. Now, top of mind for any developer, games or apps, is always revenue. And I'm sure a lot of you care about the monetization of your app and your overall bottom line. So let's just quickly cover the four common ways to turn the value that you're creating with your product into revenue on mobile. We have paid apps, where the user pays once up front. We have subscriptions, which I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with. The user pays once per period. Then we have in-app purchase apps, where the app is usually free and users are paying in order to enhance their experience. And then we have ads-driven apps, where again, the app is usually free, but they're paying with their time and attention by viewing ads. Now, ultimately, the end goal for both apps and games is to drive engagement in hopes to monetize their users. But how do each of these monetization models interact with the user's engagement? We're going to go through them one by one. Oh, too far. For paid apps, engagement actually isn't going to be tied to monetization. And that's because the user pays for the app upfront before any engagement occurs. Now, for subscriptions, key engagement actions are going to be the ones that tie to specific revenue actions. And you can usually break subscriptions engagements into two types of users. You have your early or free users. And in that case, you would want to look at the engagement actions that correlate with subscriber conversion. So these are the engagement actions that are showing that they're getting value from the app. If you're a video media app, maybe it's how many videos they're viewing in a day. If you're a news or content app, maybe it's how many articles or how much time they're spending viewing those articles. Now, on the other side, you have subscribers. They've already seen the value. They subscribed. But in this case, you want to look at the engagement actions that correlate with subscription renewal. So the actions that are showing that they're continuing to get value from the app. And they may be similar to the free or early users, but what you would expect to see is a sustained or increase in those engagement metrics throughout a user's subscription duration. And finally, we have titles using in-app purchases and ads. And in this model, certain engagement actions are designed to tie to monetization. And as many of you know, games lives more within this monetization model. So let's talk about how they approach designing their games and monetization strategy to link directly with engagement. Well, let's take one step back and start with a simpler question. What are games? Well, they're an entertainment product, right? People play them to have fun, to relax, to take a little break from life. So when developers are thinking about designing a game, it's important that they consider the experience that they're trying to create. Why will someone enjoy using their entertainment product? Or how the product is actually providing value to its users. They then take that understanding and align it with the design and monetization models, trying to figure out how they can extract revenue from the value that their app is providing. Now, for gaming developers specifically, it's important to understand how the game and monetization design are influenced by this why. And that's because the experience that they want to create is going to have implications and is supported by both of these setups. And on top of that, these two designs will have implications on each other. Now, 
generally speaking, the same is true for most apps. Maybe your value is entertainment, like watching a show or a movie, but maybe it's more of a utilitarian use case. Maybe I need to book a ride, uh, take a note, or get my groceries. But at the end of the day, you still want to ensure that you're providing value to your users with your app, whatever your app may be, and that your app and monetization design complement that motivator. So going back to how developers are approaching game design, we like to say that good game design is built on the foundation of the core game loop. But what's the core game loop? Well, game loops are the set of actions that users will be doing over and over again in a game. And thinking through the user motivations we just discussed, those motivations are gonna be utilized when thinking about the design of the game and building out the core game loop. But let's actually go through an example of a more popular game genre, match three. Who here has played a match three game? Oh wow, not that many hands, okay. Well, I chose this genre because I figured most of you would know what it was <laughs> and know the core game loop, but if you're not familiar with it, match three is a game where players match three of the same thing on a board. It could be food, it could be candy, um, it could be gems, and they're trying to achieve a variety of goals within a set number of moves. So the most popular game on the market is Candy Crush, um, but let's actually go through the core game loop. So in match three, a user would play a level, and they can either win or lose that level. If they win, they'll unlock the next level and continue playing, and if they lose, they can use another life in order to attempt that level again, or wait until they have another life and then attempt the level again. So why is somebody motivated to play this type of game? It's a pretty basic puzzle game when you think about it, right? But what they've done is actually layered on the idea of progression on top of that standard puzzle game. There's a map, there's nodes, and I want to continue to go up that map. But they've also layered on this social competitive aspect through the comparing of scores on a level and also through comparing the progression on the map. If Nick, our MC, was two levels above me on the map, I'm likely going to be very motivated to play those two levels and pass him. So what are the actions that are going to be important to this core game loop? Well, playing a level is gonna be key. If a user isn't playing a level, then they're not actually engaging in the game. So this is gonna be the core engagement metric for this game genre. But gaming developers also have to think about what are the actions that are driving players to return to the game. And since we know that a key motivator for match three is progression, we know that a user's engagement and retention are key to them unlocking those new levels. And this is where the difficulty design comes into play. Match three developers have to ensure that their levels are easy enough so that you can complete them and progress, but not too easy in the fact that you're bored and maybe they can't monetize. So they're spending a lot of time with their core game loops, not only to understand their engagement and retention points, but also to understand what are the engagements that are driving higher opportunity for monetization. And since many games have in-game assets or in-game economies, they can turn that question into, what are the engagement actions that are gonna deplete the user's in-game balance in order to drive continued purchase demand? Now in match three, monetization normally happens at three points. The player can lose a level and choose to continue. They can use a boost to help them during a level, or they can purchase a life in order to attempt the level more times. So in this case, Playing a level is driving the monetization opportunity. That core engagement is tied to monetization. But losing a level is actually gonna drive an even higher monetization opportunity. And that's because it links to the motivators of the game. I wanna continue to progress or pass people have a better score on the map. So as you can see in this game genre, engagement and monetization are fundamentally tied. And this is true for most games in the mobile space. The core game loop is not only designed to think about the player's motivations, but it's also designed to link those motivators to monetization. So what can apps learn from this? Well, as we thought through this, we realized that every app's engagement is going to be different, even for apps in the same category. So it's really important to understand the main value that your app provides and the core motivation of your users. Why do people use your app? and why do they come back to it? So you can map out your core loop to understand what those key engagement actions are and how they relate to the monetization in your app. 
and then plan out how to maximize those engagement actions for your users. Even if they're only in your app for five minutes, make sure they're doing the key engagement action in those five minutes. Because as you saw with the games example, the core loop is designed to maximize the core engagement action to satisfy the player's motivations and hopefully monetize them. All right, so design side done, how they tie engagement to monetization. In the remainder of the presentation, we're actually gonna go through a few data-driven insights that will link engagement to the other two pieces of the user lifecycle, retention and monetization. First day engagement is especially important. We've heard many developers talk about this today, and I know this isn't news to anyone in the room. But we're gonna focus in on the first time user experience and really trying to figure out what is the value of your app and how quickly are you showing that value to your users. So we're gonna look at two relationships on the player's first day. And just to start out, we're gonna start with games data, but I promise I will share apps data as well. So the first relationship that we're going to explore is the length of time that a new user engages on their first day versus the percentage of those users who come back to the app or game seven days later. Now the reason we're doing this is because we know all of you have different onboarding and different tutorials. So we wanna use an apples to apples comparison, which is gonna be how much time they're spending and you guys can actually figure out at how many minutes will someone finish the onboarding, et cetera. So what we're looking at here is the plot for the top games on Google Play. And it's showing you the length of time that a user engages on their first day on the x-axis versus the percentage of those users who come back to the game seven days later. And the trend shows that the longer a user spends in the game on their first day, the more likely they are to return. Makes sense, right? <laughs> it's pretty reasonable to assume the longer that somebody is spending in your title on the first day, the more entertained they are, the more likely they are to return and keep having fun. But let's see what happens if we look at two different games. So now we're showing you the same plot for two different games on Google Play. And the trend for both shows what we just covered in the previous slide. The longer they spend in the game on their first day, the more likely they are returned. But what we wanna highlight here is that the engagement experience across these two games is different. While both the relationship is positive, the increase in return rate is different. And this is gonna be driven by things like onboarding, and different core loop designs. So game two might be doing a much better job of onboarding their users and having them show them what engagement action is driving the fun and have driving stronger retention relative to game one. Now the second relationship that we're gonna look at is the length of time that a new player engages on their first day versus how well those users monetize over their first week, focusing both on conversion and lifetime value. So again, looking at the same top games on play, we can see the length of time that a user engages on their first day versus two metrics on the dual access. The average revenue per install in the user's first week, which is the solid line, and then we have the percentage of those installs that convert to a buyer by the end of their first week, which is the dotted line. The trend for both, the longer they spend, the more likely they are to convert and drive stronger LTV. So showing the players the value early on in a game is not only driving strong retention, but it's also driving strong future lifetime value. But again, how can this be different if we look at two different games? So the top is showing you the correlation between day one minutes played and week one buyer conversion, and the bottom is showing you the correlation between day one minutes played and week one average revenue per install. And again, the trend is the same for both. The more they engage, the more you can make. But you can see just how much a user's engagement can impact conversion and lifetime value, how it's different across these two games. And it's gonna be based on two things. The monetization design, or how deep the spend potential is. So you can see game one, we saw earlier, they didn't retain as many users, but they're doing a much better job of showing good value proposition and having a large majority of their users convert. But it's also gonna be dependent on the engagement action tie-ins. So how directly are monetization and engagement actions tied together in the core loop? But enough about games. Let's look at an app. We're actually gonna look into the performance of Blinkist, an education app on Google Play. And you guys may have heard Ilya speak earlier today, but what Blinkist does is transform key insights from nonfiction books into text and audio formats so that you can listen or read and get that key insight in just 15 minutes. Keywords, 15 minutes. <laughs> 
So let's look at what their correlation looks like for the first 15 minutes of a user's engagement on their first day. So here we're looking at the first day engagement of a new user on the x-axis versus the D7 retention on the y. Does the trend look familiar? We see there's a strong positive correlation between a user's first day engagement and those users returning to the app, the same as we did with games. And as you heard early from Ilya earlier in today's presentation, they're really focusing, on what, focusing in on what the predictors might be for retention. So th they specifically called out a test they did on the category presentation and really tried to make that simpler and more seamless so users can get more types of books presented to them. We also see similar trends with week one monetization in Blinkist, the same as we did in games. More engagement shows, drives stronger monetization. And what I wanna call out here is you can see this change in slope for both metrics at about minute five, much stronger. So let's think back to the why. Why is somebody using this app? Well, the motivators for Blinkist are getting knowledge fast, or faster than you would otherwise having to read the entire book. So self-improvement and time savings are likely very important to their users. And based on that change in slope at the five minutes, I am very well aware that may be where they put their soft paywall, but it may also be where the value is becoming very clear to the users and they want to invest in the title. So this is a great example of an education app that's focusing in on the first time user experience and optimizing it to drive strong retention and hopefully future monetization. But what about your app? What do you expect your retention and monetization to look like based on a user's first day engagement? Or better yet, is it true for all types of apps, not just focusing in on education apps like Blinkist who are doing a great job? So zooming out, what you're looking at here is the plot for the top performing apps on play. And we see it has the same positive correlation as games, up and to the right with longer engagement on a user's first day. And we can see for top apps, that first 20 minutes has a really strong slope, meaning that users are seeing the value early on in their first day. But as we saw with games, and even in the Blinkist example, it's important to consider what the slope of your correlation will be, thinking directly about your app's engagement use case. Now, up until now, I've been talking very hypothetically about engagement use case. So let's go through a couple of examples together, especially because as we looked across top titles by category, these trends continue to hold true. So let's think about a dating app. What's the motivator? Well, I, I want to find love, right? <laughs> if not, I at least want to find a date for my Friday night. So the core engagement loop or flow for a dating app for a first time user might be like something what you see, that, that you see here. There's a fast sign up process. Then I can look at others' profiles, decide if I'm interested, and then initiate some type of action. Whether that's swipe, message, it's going to depend on the app. Now, if we consider how quickly the dating apps are allowing me to see the potential value point, which is others' profiles, I can see who I might be able to get an awesome date with, we would likely expect a steeper curve on retention earlier in the user's life cycle, or first day engagement. And that's gonna be because I'm thrown right in to seeing the potential value. But what about a health and fitness app? In these apps, you might not engage in the core action or see the potential value as quickly. You have to inv invest a little bit more time. So let's talk about a calorie tracking app. The motivator is gonna be self-improvement, and maybe I have some type of goal that I wanna reach. I wanna lose weight, I wanna gain muscle, could be a lot of different things. But we would expect that the onboarding flow would look something like this. I would sign up, start inputting my meals from breakfast, then my lunch, then my dinner, and then I can see if I stayed within my daily consumption goal. And from there, I can continue tracking that over a period of time and review my goal. So considering it might take longer on my first day to see the potential value of the app, which that point might be, did I stay within my band of consumption when I log my food or my workouts? We would expect a relatively flatter slope for retention um, in, for a user's first 10 minutes in the day. And then it would become steeper because the more they invest in, the, the more they invest time into the app, the more that they're gonna see the value. So you can see how the app use case 
the core loop, and how quickly the user is seeing the value can impact your title's retention on a user's very first day. And what about monetization? Again, we see positive correlation against both buyer conversion and average revenue per install. And some things to consider that can impact the slope of either of these curves are gonna be your monetization design and your pricing strategy. Now for games specifically, we normally see a much stronger, uh, steeper correlation between these, and that's because they're using in-app purchases and or ads, which allows for strong monetization potential because you're getting continuous payments out of the user. Versus apps can normally see a bit of a flatter slope, and that's because the most popular monetization strategy with apps is going to be subscriptions, which is based on that one-time payment per period. So the main takeaway is to really focus in on a user's first day engagement to drive strong retention and monetization. And the importance of the first day engagement is why many game developers are spending cycles crafting their first time user experience. They're doing qualitative consumer research to inform the design. So things like how long should it be? How many concepts is too many concepts to teach? But they're also doing a ton of quantitative testing with some of the metrics we covered here during soft launch. So if you're an app, consider what your first time user experience is and what your onboarding looks like, and really try to understand how long it takes before a user engages in the actions that are showing them the potential value of your app. Really try to make sure that your lobby and interface is clear. If I finish the onboarding, can I find what I need to find easily? And finally, think about your monetization design and pricing as we saw that it can impact early lifetime value for both apps and games. So now that we've covered the relationship between first day engagement and the other parts of the user lifecycle, let's look beyond the first day. Specifically looking at the relationship for all of our users and trying to understand why optimizing our users' engagement is crucial to both future monetization and future engagement. So what we're gonna do is look at the entire user race's engagement over a seven day period. And we're gonna break them into buckets based on the count of unique days that they were active. And this will always be on the X axis. And we'll compare this to two things. The engagement in the following seven day period to see what type of future engagement we can expect from our least and most engaged users. And then we'll compare it to the monetization per user in the same following seven day period. And this will help us understand how optimizing our users' engagement for the week, or your Dow-Wow ratio, can impact both future monetization and future engagement. So starting with games, users with higher engagement in the prior period will drive stronger monetization and engagement in the future period. So the left graph here is showing you the correlation between the prior week engagement and the following week engagement. And we can see for both of these games, users who are active five of the last seven days will average about four days of activity in the next seven days. And the right graph is showing you the prior week engagement against the average revenue per weekly active user in the following seven days. And in both of these examples, we can see that a user who logs in every day of the week will spend two times as much as the users who log in six of the seven days. And we can also see slightly different slopes between these two games. And again, that's gonna go back to game one is likely showing that clear regular value for purchases, which is driving strong spend potential from their most engaged user base. And generally speaking, the relationship across both these correlations for most games is very strong but I'm gonna spend a lot less time on games this time and we're gonna look at an app's performance. This time we're gonna look at Duolingo, a language learning app with tons of languages available. And what you do is you learn through questions and lessons, starting with the basics and getting more difficult as you progress. And I wanna highlight that they have a key message, learn new words daily. So on top of their daily lessons, they also have a daily login and lesson streak, where if you miss a day, you can pay to repair that streak. So it's pretty clear that Duolingo wants their users to be active on a daily basis, right? So how can we use this to understand how well the additional day that a user is logging in will drive overall future engagement and revenue for their language learning app? Well, we looked at the same correlations that we covered with games, and we see similar trends for Duolingo. The prior week engagement is highly correlated to the next weeks. So users who log in six of the seven days are likely to be active about four days of the next seven. 
and for spend, we see very strong correlation as well. With Duolingo specifically, you can see the very strong increase in the engagement spend slope for users who are active about two, more than two days a week. So let's think back to the motivators. Why is someone using Duolingo? To learn a language, right? Drive self-improvement. But Duolingo is reinforcing this motivator with progression and completion of their lessons. So we can see that a user who's engaging only one or two days of the prior period has a much lower uh, spend correlation. And that's gonna be because if someone's only logging in one or two days to learn a language, they're probably not gonna see the value. They're probably not progressing and actually being able to communicate in that language. But as engagement increases, we see the stronger, more positive correlation. And that's because these engaged users are probably clearly seeing the value and learning the language because they're engaging more regularly. So this is a great example of a language learning app that sees even stronger monetization than some of the game examples that we just covered. And this is driven by sustained and optimized engagement. But is it true for all types of apps? Duolingo is doing a great job, but maybe it monetizes a little bit differently than yours. So zooming out, we're again looking at the top uh, app's performance, same two plots, and we can see the same positive correlation as we did with games, up to the right with more regular engagement. But you can also see that the future average revenue per weekly active user curve for top apps has a non-linear increase for the most engaged users. So now we can start brainstorming what would change the slope of this monetization curve. Well, if it was a subs only model, we would likely expect a, a more flat kind of linear relationship because it's again based on that one time purchase per period. So titles with mixed business strategies are driving stronger spend potential for the most engaged users. So integrating in in-app purchases or ads can drive that potential for the most engaged users in your titles. But maybe you're not a weekly destination. Maybe you're more of a monthly. I wanna share one more piece of data to drive our point home on how important sustained engagement is for top performing apps on play. So what this chart is showing you is the monthly active users broken out by the number of days that they were active in a calendar month. And we broke these apps into two groupings, the top 50 and the apps ranked 51 to 150. And we can see that top apps see more regular or higher engagement from a larger percentage of their users, ultimately showing that they're more sustainable with their engagement compared to the lower ranked apps. So now what we've learned is that we can focus in on how to optimize your user's engagement in order to maximize both future engagement and monetization. And some things to consider are what is the frequency of your app's usage? Do you wanna be a daily, weekly, or monthly destination? And remember that your monetization model will have an impact on spend potential from your most engaged users. So think about how you can really maximize that value. But now let's wrap up and go over our takeaways. First, understand your core engagement metrics and how they're designed to tie to retention and conversion for your users. Next, focus on their engagement in the very first day, making sure that you're showing them the value of your app in order to drive strong retention and lifetime value. Finally, keep track of and optimize for continued engagement because as we just saw, it's a predictor of future engagement and monetization. And some things to consider if you're trying to shift your retention and or monetization curve are your first time user experience and how quickly you're showing that value to your users. Understanding your app's frequency of usage and how it may differ from your least and most engaged users. And finally, consider your monetization design and pricing. Make sure you're really thinking through those paywalls and the pricing across your subscription SKUs. And consider whether there's an opportunity to layer other monetization models in order to enhance the spend from your most engaged users. So I hope this was useful in showing you how games are thinking about engagement and monetization and help you figure out whether there's an opportunity to apply these learnings into your apps.